Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, I'm going to introduce you to some basics of UI design in Android. And not really even UI design, just really how various components of the UI are connected to your app. So if I'm going to use MP0 as an example, even though I know this is part of MP1. But if you've run MP0 in the emulator or in your app, you might have wondered, why does it look the way it does? and how are various parts of the UI, like this button, for example, or this button, um, how are they different? Um, and then how are they connected with the actual application, the code that you've written? So there are two answers to this question in two different places. There's an answer about why the UI looks the way it does and why are things positioned where they are and why are different elements you know, why is this button different than that button, different than this um, uh, toggle switch? And then there's the connection between the layout and the UI elements and the actual code in your app. So let's look at the first thing first. The first thing is the app layout. So let's go over here. We'll go to our um, app directory. I'm in the Android view right now, uh, looking at the MP0 starter code. I'm gonna open up the res directory. And in here, I'm going to go into the layout folder. And there's a layout here called activity main.xml. And actually, if you notice, I'm going to go into my main activity. When the activity is created, uh, way down here, you'll see that one of the first things it does is it sets calls a function called set content view. And it sets the content view to um, r.layout.activity main. So this is the view that's used when the app is opened. So let's open this up. I'm going to shut down my emulator. It's starting to slow down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to close this, close this. And so now we're in, uh, in Android Studio, what's called the design view. And now you can see something that looks a little bit like the application that we just saw running. Um, you don't see the map because this is a mock-up of what the UI is going to look like. And so there's no content in the map here. But on the bottom here, you do see um, some of the same UI elements that we see in the app. And this is a tool that you can use in Android to uh, add UI elements, to position them on the screen, and to identify them in ways that allow you to link them with your app. And so here I'm going to right click on, on this and there's a whole bunch of different options here that, that I'm not going to go through in this screencast. Um, but I do see that, for example, if I look over here, um, you know, this is, if I open this up, let's see if I right click on this guy. Again, there are a lot of options here that are essentially about uh, different um, ways to position things. But let's say I wanted to put a new button on here. What I can do is I can actually go over here and I can select a button and then I could drag it onto my UI. And now I have options about how to position it. I have options about what the text on the button is that I've altered on our center button and things like this. So this is the way that you begin designing Android uh, user interfaces. And we will give you more practice at this later in the semester and on future MPs and in future labs. But for now, let me just show you how this is connected to the code here in your main activity um, Java file. So I've, let's look at the um, the stop button. So if I uh, if I look at this, um, let's see here if I can just select this, and then I go over here and look at the attributes view. What I'm going to see is that one of the attributes here is this thing called an ID. This is a unique ID for this element. This allows me to identify it in my source code. So for example, this is a um, button that has two states um, and I want to be able to respond when the user either turns this switch on or turns it off. So the way I do that is in my main activity file, down here, there's this bit of code. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a function called find view by ID that's going to allow me to locate one of the elements in my UI using that name that I gave it. So this function 
takes um, usually prefaces with r.id. So that says, give me the um, element in the view that's name is enable location. Once I have a reference or a handle to this, I can do things like in this case, add a unchecked change listener to this particular UI element. So now what I've done is the comment explains is I'm setting up some code here that's gonna run every time this particular UI element is clicked. Um, and because this is a toggle button, it has two states, so it's either on or off. This is the difference between this and the button that you had to add for to finish MP0. So that's the linkage here. And again, this is a fairly intimidating um, set of tools here that you are, are gonna start to be introduced to in terms of the, the layout designer. This is not an easy thing to, to learn how to use. Um, there's a lot of different options. Positioning things in particular um, is, is quite difficult. Um, and you might have noticed that the UI that we're using isn't particularly beautiful either. It's not um, sort of flashy and nicely skinned like the apps that you're probably used to using. And there is a huge amount of work that goes into doing that actually into the design aspects of building beautiful functional apps. We're not gonna get into very much of that in this class, um, but if you like those aspects of, of app design, you'll find lots of work to do and you should start getting comfortable with this particular part of Android Studio. So again, we'll give you more practice with the, the uh, layout designer on later labs and MPs. But for now, what I just wanna uh, establish here is the linkage between a element in the UI that has this unique ID and the code that I set up to run in the app. I can show you a, a different linkage. So here's a different element. It also has an ID, it's wander. Um, and then I have, and that's a switch. Right, so this is the type of the UI element. It's a switch, that was a toggle button. Um, both switches and toggle buttons have two states, and so both in both cases I set up this on check change listener, which receives both a reference to that view element and a Boolean that indicates whether it's on or off, and then here's the code that I use to respond to that in my app. So this will come in handy as you begin working on MP1, and hopefully this begins to sort of demystify some of the connections between the visual parts of your application, the visual parts of your app, the app's user interface, and the code that you write that powers it.